housemates. You are to go to the bedroom and find the small blue Big Brother bags. Yes. You are to pack them for an extended stay away. Oh, you're kidding. You have five minutes. Go, 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 go. 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 is live nominations. Here's your host, Gretel Galeen. Hello. Hello, massive live audience. Welcome to live nominations. Tonight, we ignite Igor, watch our 12 housemates click their nomination castanets and decide for whom the nomination bell will toll. But first, let's cross to the house, because we have a secret to reveal. No, really? Hello, <laughs> house. Hey! There we are. Now, I have to explain to everyone, our massive live audience here... Oh. I have to... Oh, Ashley, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I have to explain. Now, today, you had a task. You had to divide into two teams. Two captains were chosen. It was Elle and Ryan, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. OK, and then you had to compete. You had a green team and a red team. Yeah. yeah. Now, no, you don't know who the winner was, do you? No. no. All right, let me just confirm with Big Brother. Who was the winner? Red team. The red team yeah. won. Yeah. All right, can I get a wide shot so that we can see everybody? Because I'd like to see who the losers are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, losers, put your hands up. Yeah. Don't just stick L's on your forehead. No, wide shot so I can see everybody because I want to have a word with them. Because, as you know, Big Brother asked you to pack your bags Reddish. for an extended stay. Oh, All of you have been asked to pack, but this will actually only immediately affect the losers, which is why Yay! I want your hands up in the air so we can see who you are. All right, do any of you losers have any idea what is going to happen now? We're going into a little room across the way, aren't we? Yeah. Yes, there's a den over there. Okay, yes, a den. We can and you, Elle, will be living in there forever. OK. <laughs> I want you to get up. Do not bother getting excited because it's nothing worth getting excited about. Oh, Your extended oh, stay has something to do with that room. In you go. You've been wondering what was behind the secret door. Now you will find out. Just the losers, not the winners. <laughs> Home sweet home. We yeah. got something. Of course, Merlin walks in and says it's cool, but we do have to remember he grew up living in a caravan. <laughs> okay? <laughs> now, all of those people will now be asked to regroup because, of course, it's nomination night. And tonight we decide who the winners and losers of nomination will be. All right? If you want to see more of that, of course, see The Daily Show. There will be two sorts of losers in the house this week. The losers of the task, who will be living in a rather unfashionably decorated cardboard box-like situation. And, of course, the nominees. Terry's been nominated twice so far. She's asked herself why and come up with some rather obscure answers. Now I've just got absolutely no idea what people would be nominating me for. So, I just might as well just let it all hang out. I've got to talk to you and I'll do it while I'm pissed. Semi-sort of, kind Why? of tipsy. Nothing, because it's even funner when I talk, because I tell the truth. <laughs> OK. One day I was walking through the lounge room and I heard you say something that sounded like a really bitchy comment to me. Then we had a little bit of a tiff that night and I was just shitty because I thought I heard you say something really nasty to me. When? The, when? I don't even know when we had a tiff. Yeah, you were talking to someone and I, as I walked through, I heard you say something, but I can't remember what it was and I really don't care now. And, like, he's like, oh, yeah, get over it. But I think I was still a little bit shitty that night. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
but now I kind of feel like I've got to know you a bit better, especially the last couple of days. Oh. Your ass. And I know now that I don't think you'd ever say that. I totally took you the wrong way. People do. I'm very used to it. Hug. <laughs> and me too. Hug. I'm just coming in, actually, because I'm a little bit, um, shall I say, frustrated by a conversation that Terry and I just had. I don't know if it was intended to be an apology, but it kind of just turned out to be insulting me. I think. Because if, if it was meant to be an apology, then it wasn't a very good one. So, Bree thought that was a poor apology for an apology. Let's see if Terry's attempt at peace has cushioned the nomination chair. Bree, who do you nominate for two points for eviction and why? OK, uh, for two points, I nominate Terry um, because... I find that she has a really negative attitude towards a lot of things and on top of that um, when it comes to her having different taste or opinion to myself or the group um, she doesn't bend either way I find that she's really stubborn and I think because of all of this we're going to eventually butt horns and have conflict which I'd like to avoid at all costs because it's already kind of started a bit How does that affect your time in the house? Uh, well I don't really want to be having conflicts with somebody that I'm living with because that'd make it uncomfortable. For one point, I nominate Kane. Um, just because I find that every conversation that I'm in with him resorts back to football, surfing or cars and it affects my time in the house because it makes me bored. Terry. OK, this week I nominate Merlin for two points. Um, I feel like, even though I feel like I've got on better with him during the week, I had a bit of an argument with him in the kitchen earlier in the week. Um, it made me feel... Um, it made me feel like an idiot. <laughs> um, and I felt like he was not being open-minded to see my perspective on it. It, it was very one-sided. That's affected me because I don't want that, really don't want that to happen, but I felt like, I felt silly, intimidated and all those sorts of things. Um, this week I nominate Crystal for one point. Um, even though she's really happy and bubbly, there was um, one time during this week where it happened to be while she was drunk, where she'd, I would talk to her and she'd actually, I'd start talking to her and she'd actually look at me and then actually turn away and start talking to somebody else. You know, it was just blatantly obvious that she didn't really care about what I said at that particular point in time. So it just made me feel like a bit worthless, I suppose. Well, aren't these getting personal? And coming up, Merlin, Wesley and Paul arrange the nomination flowers and we catch up with our second evictee, Igor. We all cooked tea last night and then we all cleaned up except the eggs. Yeah, I know. All he did was came into the barbecue when it was just about cooked and started, yeah, started yeah. tonging me sausages mm. and then getting a few plates ready for me. And that was his effort for yesterday. No wonder he's so bored, mate, because he won't do anything. Imagine if he, like, got a... He's just got a cult following out there. <laughs> Or have a cult following out here. I wonder if they have a secret fart greeting. The possibilities are endless because Igor snorted as a grown woman and a mother. I probably shouldn't say that. But anyway, anyway, he did. He snorted and farted and cleared his throat in the house. So let's see if he's managed to clear the air out here. Please welcome Igor. <laughs> How are you? Not bad. 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 Not Not bad. 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 No, I haven't had a chance to speak to my parents. Hi, Mum, hi, Dad, brother, Vass and my sister-in-law. I haven't had a chance to speak to nobody. OK, so the interviews, what was the main thread of the interviews? What were the, like, the main questions? Uh, the main questions were Merlin and Paul. Really? The, uh, for the first couple of hours, it was Merlin and Paul. You Merlin mean the fight Paul. that they had? Yeah. 
the argument they had, and it was just basically about them. And then things came onto me. They started asking questions about my past, what's happened with, you know, when I was younger, you do a few things. And I just admitted to them and said to them, you know, young and dumb, and people have skeletons in the closet, and I'm not afraid to say it. Were you scared of that? Like, people asking you that when you came um, out of the house? No, I wasn't scared of it, because I actually got told. I saw the tabloids, and I thought, well, that's this it. This is after you came out of yeah, the house? Yeah, after I came out, and I saw the papers, and I said, well, that's it, you know, it's come out. I'm not going to hide about it. It's there, and I'm you know, going to admit the truth, and that's it. And was it quite cleansing to know, well, actually, it's all out there, everybody's had to deal with it, these are my answers, let's move on? No, well, that's what I said, and a lot of the people I spoke to today, the radio stations, once I said it to them, they just automatically changed and you know, got into the house and asked about housemates and forgot all about that. Now, you were worried about your Monaro. Is it still there? Oh, it's still there. It's not going nowhere. <laughs> so... It's staying home. Everything is good? Everything is good. Good, because we want you to join the nomination ride with us tonight. Thank Ooh, you for coming yes. here. All right, now, where am I looking? Where am I looking? Last night's eviction show was not only rocked by Igor's departure, but by the broadcasting of an argument which Igor just mentioned between Merlin and Paul. It was about citizenship, which somehow also got Wesley burning like a mosquito coil. Well. If you think you're an Australian, become an Australian citizen. Don't come in here and preach your bullshit, mate, if you're not an Australian mate, citizen, mate. I've been living because in you country. are not shit. Man, I've been living in this Rules, country since seat, I was man. four years old. Yeah, I would die for I this country, so I don't sit here and tell me that I'm not Australian. Wait. That's just we'll bullshit, man. Don't get upset, man. I know, know what the problem is? I was going to say to you earlier. Is that you're an educated man having an argument with someone that's uneducated on those sort of things? I'd like to say I won't hold a grudge, but that's probably not being completely honest. A lot of people in the house know that he went too far and that it was stupid what he was saying. You know? It was stupid. Yeah, you, said. you didn't need to do that, man. Like, exactly. If you push someone's buttons the way that you push mine, I'm not saying it was wrong of you to do that, like you didn't even mean to. Mm. You, but you triggered something in me that I obviously got emotional about. And you triggered something in me by telling me where to go, mate, because I can't being I can't get I can't handle being told where to go when when, when there's two people, smart people, having an adult conversation about the most easiest topics of all time. <laughs> OK, time to vote for two men and a baby, and I'm not telling you which is which. I'm going to nominate Paulie for two points. Um, the incident the other night did upset me quite a bit. Uh, I don't... I'm not going to, like, hold a massive grudge over or anything like that, but it doesn't take much to get nominated in this house, and... I was quite shocked at how he just kept pushing me and pushing me and didn't give me space when it was pretty obvious that I didn't want to talk to him, that I needed my space. So, yeah, he just upset me a lot that night and that's enough in this house to to get two points from me this week. I'm going to nominate Terry again for one point. Her and I had a bit of a discussion in the kitchen and I just felt that maybe she was a bit... being a bit condescending and... Just a little bit uh, eager to speak her mind but not listen to other people's points of view. They're just a little frustrated and confused at her take on things sometimes. Wesley. For two points for nomination for eviction, I uh, vote Ashley because she hasn't been pulling a weight around the house and it's been really annoying because sometimes I've, or a few times now, I've had to clean up directly after her when she's walked out of the kitchen and just left her food on the table and it's really um, annoying that it's been going on for quite a while now. For one point for a nomination, unfortunately I vote for uh, Brie simply because she's been a bit edgy around me lately, sort of um, watching everything I do and, you know, watching how much you know, food I might take and, and even other people and it's just been um, annoying to sort of have someone on your back watching everything you do and it's, it's, it's a small thing but it's definitely affected my time in the house because it's just having someone there watching you, you know, all the time and, you know, judging everything you do and I think that's really frustrating. Paul. Well, you know, I'm in here just trying to keep it real, right, big brother? I'll start with Merle and I'll give him two, two points because, like, I'm over his, his, his acting on the punching bag and I know he's got his own little show going on out there, but that doesn't make me feel that he's strong or anything. It just makes me feel that he's really having trouble um, getting his thoughts to his mouth and saying how he really feels. It makes me feel 
feelings for Merlin that I shouldn't be feeling. I don't want to. I don't want to worry about Merlin. I've said this before. I'm not in here to babysit adults. Like, he can't even get his thoughts out. If he's got something to say, he should say it. We had an argument the other night, which is a little tiff, and he couldn't even. He couldn't even stand up and talk to me. He ran off. That affects me because I don't like that. I like to sort things out. If there's an argument, whether I'm in the wrong or he's in the wrong or anyone's in the wrong, we're in here to communicate, not walk away and do tantrums on a punching bag and pretend you're tough. Crystal's going to get my one point for a big act because um, I tried to talk to her, well, I did, did talk to her during the week about her... Um, being very upset when Aphrodite left the week before, um, from what she told me, you know, wasn't a great fan of Aphs, and yet I saw this act when she left. So I actually spoke to her about it, and she admitted to me that she put it on. That made me feel very disappointed because there was an, that, another example of acting in here which makes me feel sick in the head because I'm not in here for, for acting. I'm in here to be myself, to tell people what I think of them, and tell them what I feel about them, and I expect people to do that the same to me. <laughs> so, now you, you said that Paul was one of the closest people to you in the house. Is this a side of him that you haven't seen? No, I saw all sides of Paul, but we just had the, you know, we were on the same wavelengths, and he was more outspoken than what I was, and just said so much more, and that's just being who he is. Why does he get away with it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, people just laugh and see him as a joker and what he says, but I think people are really starting to get upset about it now. Now, did that show you another side of Wesley as well in the bathroom, the comment about the uneducated man? I mean, end of the day, me and Paul, we're on the same boat. We're both tradesmen. doesn't mean that we're un uneducated. Well, I'd like you to know I've dropped out of university twice as well. Well, then you must be uneducated as well. I am uneducated well. like you. Well, I feel good. So everybody <laughs> was offended. Some on racial grounds, so others on educational no. grounds, but no surprises there. Uh, Merlin nominated Paul, Paul nominated Merlin. Which was, which was expected to be. On we go. Let's have a look at the tally. Five housemates have racked up their nomination balls. So over with the tally board, we will find the housemates most at risk. Merlin in the lead this week on four points. Closely followed by Terry on three. <coughs> then Crystal, Ashley and Paul on two. And Kane and Bree have picked up one apiece. After the break, three more go through the diary room door, including Kane, who may have been waxed by Catherine only days ago, but still has a real nomination itch to scratch. Hey, that you got Meryl so fresh, so clean. The mic fiend with the mic fines, dropping the rhymes. Work to MC Dean and bust under ill lines. Been broke four, lock in the high score. V represent seven to the two, four once more. Shout outs to the outside. The sorry he was massive, still getting high. And to my Bella crew, yeah, the family. And lastly, to my girl, Aff, back in reality. Rewind! <laughs> Well, we know he likes to rap, which we've all agreed in here was a little embarrassing to watch. <laughs> he also likes a back crack and sack. Please ask your mum what that means. And he likes to nominate people he feels he's not connecting with. People like Elle. Nominate Elle for one point. I think she's just a bit too serious and doesn't really know how to take jokes. I'm just trying to, you know, just have, you know, have some fun and it's just a bit annoying. Down. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Cold arm. Elle is the biggest thing that comes out of a shell She's by She's dying to come out. So this is just a shell and then there's Elle and she's just like... <laughs> <laughs> dying to come out. And here we go. She's dying. Come on, Kato. Okay, no. Dying to get out. Come out, Kato. It's madness out there. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Elle's just out of it. Who she is that? She's just jumping around. She's having fun. Yeah, Going mental. Elle took the cake last night. I have a serious side to my personality, but I also have a fun side to my personality. We see your fun side every day. So, Elle's out of her shell. Will that mean little snail Kane is able to nominate someone else? Let's see right now. I nominate Crystal for two points. Um, for reasons that I always hear her talking at night when I'm trying to sleep and it, and also because I just find her to be a bit... She's just a bit full on and she's like just a bit too much to handle at times. This affects my time in the house and just makes me feel... I don't know, I get a little bit sort of frustrated and a little bit com uncomfortable around her at times. I nominate... Terry for one point. Um, <clears throat> mainly just because Terry, I find Terry to be a little bit negative at times, and just make she just makes a few negative comments, and and yeah, this affects my time in the house and, and makes me feel like I don't know, like just makes me get a bit annoyed because she's just being a bit negative. Like you know, this is positive experience, and we just have fun, and sometimes negativity annoys me a little bit. Catherine, I nominate this week. For two points, Paul, firstly, because um, I find he is a bit sarcastic and opinionated. There was a point where, in this week, where um, there was an issue um, that was escalated, I think, due to his opinions, and when it got progressively worse, um, I felt actually I was quite sad. And then when it kind of got a bit more aggressive, I was actually I actually felt a bit scared. Um, and I just feel that my time in the house shouldn't be focused around negative energy like that, but a, I want it to be more of a positive experience. One point to Ashley, only because I feel in the three weeks she's been given opportunities to pull her weight in the house, as in um, the cleaning up and um, just general household duties. Um, there was a point where another housemate wasn't doing as much and she had a little bit of a go and I kind of got a bit irritated. I felt a bit irritated that she said something when she doesn't do all that much herself. <laughs> L. For two points this week, I nominate Ashley, um, purely because she doesn't partake in the house chores as much as everyone else, meaning that everyone else, including myself, has to take on a larger burden um, with the chores, which is, is sort of frustrating because it means we don't, I don't get to spend time doing things that other things that I might want to do as well. For one point, I nominate Crystal, um, purely because during the week... Um, there was discussion when I was a bit upset about nominations last week. There was a bit of discussion had, um, and she sort of prejudged how I was feeling when she hadn't even talked to me about it. My reason is because it made me feel uncomfortable. I didn't like the fact that she'd placed prejudgments on me when she hadn't even approached me to, to get to, to see how I felt about it. And she was talking about it with other people and I wasn't even involved in the conversation. Well, what about that? Prejudgments. You thought you were a bit prejudged when you were in the house. You were telling me that you felt a little bit like the black sheep in there. Oh, I was the black sheep in the house. In what way? Oh, I mean, people sat there and I read this stuff, Eagle being a pig because he farts and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, that anyway, was not yes. Eagle. That was the audience. <laughs> and, you know, there was a time where Al sat there and thought it was funny and farted in my face and That's that was right. never brought up. And then you had the other housemates doing the same thing, but everything was just thrown at me. And now, why did they throw it at you? Is it because you did it one million times more than anyone else? <laughs> well, maybe two, yeah, a million, I'll say. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're human. I mean, if you go in the house, you've got to be who you are. And that's what I've done. But why do you think they targeted you? If... I mean... Because you targeted them. <laughs> oh, well, no, not really. No, I think it was more just, you know, the person that I am with my voice and it was different to them. Do you think it's like a class thing or you were calling yourself... At one point you said, oh, it's a wog thing, they're out to get the wogs. Did oh, you think it was that? Well, or... Afi's gone, I'm gone, and we're the two big wogs and they're all the loudmouths. You reckon and... it's a wog thing? Well, you were the loudmouths, well, whether yes. they're hand in hand, I don't know. And I think it's more of the first week we clicked very well and a lot of them knew that and saw that and we played the game that we were the married couple and we were the secret and yeah we just got along very well and they saw us as threats in some way and 
see you later. Now we're gone. Oh, well, I'm glad you're here with us. I'm glad to be here too. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> now, eight housemates have told Big Brother who should go. Let's go to the tally board and see who's on the spot and who's not. Now, as we can see, Crystal and Ashley have jumped ahead on five. Terry, Merlin and Paul are all on four and there's no other change. Shall I continue? Yes. Now, last week, we announced the first winner of KFC's Twist It Your Way competition. And as you can see, there she is, Fiona Tenby, having the time of her life, walking around, putting an envelope on a chair. <laughs> this is the sort of thing our task department does. And if you would like to be involved with them, all you have to do is put a twist on a task. So you grab a KFC twister barcode and text us your idea in 160 characters or less. Tell us how you would twist a task. She's very happy. I think she's in the audience. She is. Hello. <laughs> now, waving, waving. Now, this week's winner is Amy Bateson from Moorbark, Victoria, and she suggested we make the housemates into Siamese twins for two to three days. Join two T-shirts down the sides. The only time the twins can separate is to go to the toilet. That's a good idea. Now, for all of the details, log on to the Big Brother website, www.bigbrother.10.com.au. And after the break, more make or break nominations, and we will see how an epidemic of microphone fines could lead to massive household depression. Good afternoon, sir. Got any mints, mate? Ah, uh, yeah. That's okay. OK, thanks very much. Good afternoon. How you going? <laughs> Thank you. You, got, you want a mint? as we get down to the thorny problem of discipline. There are two ways Big Brother can punish the housemates. The first is the awarding of strikes, which once you have, re re which once you have received three, gives Big Brother the discretion to put you up for nomination. Now, the second form of punishment is fines for not wearing your microphone at all times or perhaps jumping in the pool with it, as Aphrodite did. Now, these fines cost all the housemates, not just the one who makes the mistake. This is Big Brother. Terry, your microphone. Oh, shit! Crystal, Crystal your microphone. microphone. Ah! Elle, your microphone. Oh. Yeah! So she's got two now? Yes. Yep. No, yeah, that's $60 all up. I haven't got one yet. Did I get a 10 buck fine for just walking from my bedroom to go get my shorts to have a shower? Yes, you will get a fine. Oh. Elle, your microphone. No, but it's just... Uh, I was still... Welcome to the club, dude. I'm still wet! How much have we lost now on our shopping? 70. 70 bucks. I think that's half the budget. That's so bad. <laughs> um. Who's Mike Fines? Mike. <laughs> oh, microphone Fines. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, Ashley. Who indeed is Mike Fines? Now, in the first couple of weeks, the fines were $1 per offence. It's hard to believe she doesn't have a scriptwriter, isn't it? <laughs> now, it was $1 per offence and it was deducted from the housemate's shopping budget, but now each offence brings a fine of $10 off the shopping budget. Igor got three fines before he left the house. Ryan's also on three and Ella's on two, along with Trevor. May I remind you that two fines of $20 is the equivalent of a week's worth of toilet paper. <laughs> We just tried to find a level everyone would understand. <laughs> OK. Let's see what Trevor does in the diary room chair. That's a bad segue after toilet paper. <laughs> uh, nominate Paul for two votes. Um, just as we've been going on through the week and stuff, um, well, well, one, when he was having that argument with Merle's, I saw a, a bit of Paul that I didn't really agree with and it made me a bit uncomfortable and, and uh, it'll probably affect my way in the house if uh, one night we're having a discussion, I don't want to be put in that sort of situation where I have to 
argue or eat, express how I feel in a way. It makes me feel uncomfortable and I came in here to have a good time and not argue or um, have um, a, that much conflict with uh, another person in the house. Uh, nominate one point to Little Ash. Well, I'm nominating her because she's not pulling her own weight and um, I'm doing most of her work for her. It affects my time in the house because I could be doing other stuff other than washing the dishes or cooking when um, she could be doing it herself. Ashley. I'm going to nominate Elle again for two points because for the second week running again, she cost us a lot of fines. Um, it affects my time because um, I'd be very conscious with what I'm eating and I was hoping that we could get a chicken this week but we're not going to be able to and it affects me because um, I've been having a sore stomach. It makes me feel uncomfortable because I know that this week I've, I have, I'm going to have to eat just the, the normal meat that we have again because that's all we get and um, Elle kind of, Elle got three strikes and so she wasn't really paying attention so it really it was annoying as well. Trevor for one point. Ugh. Because this morning when we had our little um, cheerleading task, he was standing further away from the grief and it affected um, us because we were trying to play a team sport and he wasn't participating straight away. It made me upset because it lost us time with our task and we could have lost our game. Right, so there are pretty deep reasons there. <laughs> Very deep. Igor, Ashley, she, I thought she was a genius when she went into the house. <laughs> I genuinely did. I told everyone she's a genius. Is she a genius? Oh, yeah, if you want to look at it that way. <laughs> What's she like to live with? Ah, uh, she'll just say the most bizarre, funniest things. Like, you see now who's Mike Fines and the comments that she pulls out, but that. The sad thing is that, like, you know, a girl doesn't know a lot of things and not, is not aware, and the girl just made her look so dumb and stupid. And, like, I felt uncomfortable, and a lot of people said it. So, I mean, the girl may not be switched on in a lot of ways and about a lot of things, but at the end of the day, I got along with her very well. She's got a good heart? Oh, she's got a good heart. All right, well, let's see what's happening on the tally board now. Ten housemates now have thrown their nomination snowballs. So, who is out in the cold? The lead has changed again. Paul and Ashley are tied on six. Crystal has five. Terry and Merlin are on four each. Elle has picked up two points and Trevor joins Bree and Kane on one point. Now, tonight is the launch of Virtual Big Brother. Now, this is an interactive game with prizes. You just check the website for details and watch up late with our very own Mike. Watch it tonight to hear Mike reveal the first weekly task. Now, as part of Virtual Big Brother, we have a question for you. You just SMS the correct answer and you could win yourself a caricature of this week's Evic D, which is you, Igor. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Shadow of eviction. Now, one housemate who already casts a long shadow is gentle giant Ryan, who would prefer it if Crystal stayed in someone else's shade. Oh. 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 It's hot! We're not all getting out of the sky. I just can't, I just can't talk to Crystal. I can't talk to Crystal. When we got into this bar, Crystal's rocked up in these, this... I, I think you call them bathers, but they were just two pieces of material that were like that and like that. And she was like... Aah! 
and they'll, they'll, they'll rolled her eyes and looked at me and said, do you find Crystal attractive? I said, not at all, mate, totally opposite. Oh, I just feel like sometimes he just, he, he says it, he just goes, no, that's bullshit. Or he goes, no, you're wrong. And I feel like saying, look, I know that you're eight years older than me, or seven, eight years older than me, but that doesn't mean that I'm wrong about, you know, my opinion. If you're gay, you're born gay. You are. Yes, you are. What about people who are bi? They're born bi. It's a mental thing. Oh, they, shit. But they just don't realise it until they're older and, and, and exploring their sexuality. It's not bullshit. Massive bullshit. Why? Because you don't believe it. Yep. That's why it's bullshit. Yep, so you're right and I'm wrong. Is that right? No, I'm just saying that's what my opinion is. Yep, well, that's my opinion. OK, well, let's see how our last two housemates nominate. Starting with the girl who believes in nature over nurture, Crystal. I nominate two points to Terry. Um, similar reasons to those of last week and the week before. Basically, um, I find that she has quite a stubborn personality and um, having conversations with her um, is hard. She makes me feel like sometimes... Um, like makes me feel guilty of some, sometimes when when we might be doing something as a group but she she sometimes make makes us feel like we leave her out and i feel that sometimes i've got to give her extra consideration so that she doesn't make me feel like um i'm being inconsiderate to her i give one point to merlin i just feel like i see two different merlins sometimes like you know sometimes he's he's, he's great to to like be able to talk to but then he can be very biased and yeah he gets quite naive about other people's feelings especially sometimes he'll just blurt out something and I don't think he's actually considered how that makes me feel. I don't want to be in a house with him if he's going to make me feel uncomfortable about what I, how I want to express myself. Ryan. This week for two votes um, I nominate Crystal. Um, this one's pretty hard, but I just find it very hard to uh, listen to Crystal. Um, I've sort of tried to sit down with her a couple of times and, and speak to her, and I find it very hard to talk to her. It affects my time in the house because, uh, yeah, look, when she sort of uh, tries to tell me a story or anything like that, it, it, it frustrates me. It makes me feel pretty frustrated, and I sort of feel like I have to get away. For one vote, I nominate Terry. Um, I've tried to get to know Terry a little bit better as well and, and I just haven't been able to uh, hold a conversation with Terry as well. She's a pretty full-on character and um, she's quite out there and I think me and her are totally different people and, and um, sort of annoys me in a way. Um, you know, when she uh, gets a little bit loud. I find it sometimes that I have to get away from Terry as well and that's how it affects me in the house. Now, I just have to ask you, Igor, do you think the boys would find it a little bit easier around Crystal if she put a, some more fabric on? <laughs> I'm just asking that would. from a girl-boy perspective. Cos she's, you know, everybody's locked away and she's, she's a pretty sexy girl wandering around. Do you think that's difficult for the boys? Yeah, I mean, like Ryan said, it's just a piece of material over the top and she's just prancing around and there's another piece of material here and the way she walks, yeah. She's a sexy girl, but, but do you think that the boys are sort of attracted to her or they get angry with themselves that she's flaunting herself? Like, have you got a theory? No, or am they, I just rabbiting on? No, you, <laughs> they get angry because she does tell a story so wrong and carries on and just blah, 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 blah. And just, it's just, you know, a, a lot of guys can't put up with it. It's not, really? I, I don't think it's more her look and her appearance and her clothing. I think it's more the way she talks and how she acts. Oh, good. Well, we'll all take our tops off then. <laughs> now... Feel free. Now, I have rabbited on, but we have to say thank you so much for coming here. No you worries. have been a joy. Now, let's have a look at your legacy item, which we, of course, know. Could you describe that for us, please? Uh, well, it's a doll of Michael Schumacher. Yep. Uh, Ferrari racing champion. And as you know, I'm a former one fanatic. All right, and the, the money goes to the Asthma Foundation, yes. and we're already on $690. Now, we have prizes for you to say thank you. People on the web oh. have got this toy car 
Wow. Especially for you. Thank and that's you. from eBay, and we have this. Now, this is from Three. You know, you got those fabulous yes, phones. Yes. People can go into the Three shops and they can record hello video messages I'll for you, and they're all on. No, they're all good. <laughs> they're all good. So they're in there. I'm talking so quickly because we're running out of time. But there okay, we are. That's good. Now, remember to bid for Igor's legacy item on the website. It's now, as I said, up to $690. Thank you, and farewell to you, Igor. Thank we will you. be seeing you with an online chat tonight mm -hmm. at 9:30. So if you have a burning question to ask him, log on and tap away. And after the break, we cross to the house to hear Big Brother's big announcement and watch people say, well, oh, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> OK? <laughs> this is Big Brother. The nominees will be announced in five minutes. All housemates to the lounge. for the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's get straight down to the house to find out who is nominated for eviction this week. We all have to just yell out like that. This hey. is Big Brother. Here we go. This week, <laughs> there are four oh! nominees for eviction. You're kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Terry. Tessa. <laughs> Crystal. What? Oh! Sorry. Imagine. Paul. Oh! <laughs> Grain of salt. <laughs> Grain of salt. <laughs> Ashley. Give us five, Ash. Come on, man. <laughs> you had an impact. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> well, there they are. Let's quickly have a final look at the tally board. Terry is up for nomination again for the third week in a row, and this time is equal leader with Crystal on seven points. Paul and Ashley are on six points. Merlin just escaped by one point. He's on five, and the others haven't moved. The only people not nominated this week were Wesley, Catherine and Ryan. That means not nominated with any votes. OK, as you know, each housemate has his or her own dedicated number for the whole series, so here we go. To evict Terry, call 1902 55 55 61 or SMS Terry to 188 99 66. <laughs> Radio, so I'll just <laughs> carry on with that. We'll go with Crystal. We will go without a picture, perhaps, but here are the numbers. 1902 55 55 64 or SMS Crystal to 188 99 66. And back to me. OK, <laughs> now, shall I carry on, big brother? Here we go to evict Paul. Call 1902 55 55 63 or SMS Paul to 188 99 66. Or, I'll just carry on. I'm completely flying high here. OK, to evict Ashley. Dial 1902 55 55 66. Or SMS Ashley to 188 66. Now, you can vote from now till Sunday night. The voting lines will close at 7.45pm Eastern Standard Time for SMS and 8pm Eastern Standard Time for the phone lines. Please adjust accordingly if you're in a different time zone. Now, SMS calls cost 55 cents, phone calls cost 55 cents, more from mobiles. For terms and conditions, go to bigbrother.10.com.au. OK, the power is in your fingers. It's very, very hot in here. I will see you on Wednesday night at 9.30 for Uncut. And again on Sunday night for our next eviction. And we will see how the housemates cope with nomination, a possible humiliation, and the winners and losers task on The Daily Show at 7. And, of course, up late every weeknight. I'm Gretel Colleen, and this is Big Brother, where you are back in control. <laughs> Oh, 
This program brought to you from Dreamworld, the home of Big Brother.